Hi, right, welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. want to talk just a little bit about this uh, shutdown that's taking place. And again, it's not a shutdown. It's a slim down. Rand Paul making the observation that 85% of the government is being funded as we speak. 85% of the government is being funded. Two-thirds of the government, Rand Paul says, is Social Security and Medicare. All of that is going on. Harry Reid came forward, agreed to pay the soldiers. We're up to 85% of the government. You add up national defense, Social Security, and Medicare. That is 85% of the government, and it is being funded as we speak. So it's a slim down, not a shutdown. And by the way, on the business of violent language, uh, Chris Matthews joking last night on Colbert Report on Wednesday night, Chris Matthews is uh, joking about Bill O'Reilly's new book, Killing Jesus. And he says, you know, the book we're really waiting for is the book Killing O'Reilly. And yet everybody just laughs and how funny uh, everybody is. Uh, now, Boehner, I've already said Boehner said he's uh, going to avoid a default. So he's given up his only given up his only leverage in the deal. Let's grab uh, clip number six. This is... Uh, Representative Devin Nunez from California. He's a rhino Republican. And listen to what he says Democrats are telling him about this shutdown behind closed doors. Remember the meme out there that they want us to believe is that Barack Obama really wants to get this shutdown solved. He wants to get government back to business. He wants to get government open again. He's determined to do this for the American people. The Democrats are the ones that want to uh, get over this shutdown. It's the meme evil, wascally Republicans that are making it impossible. Let's listen to what Devin Nunez says about that. that yeah, so, look, first off, it's important for, to, to be fair here. Uh, the Democrats are giddy about this behind closed doors. I mean, they think that this is going to give Nancy Pelosi back the gavel. They are very cocky. They're very confident. Uh, I assume they're just looking at polling information, and they want to continue down this. They want to keep the government shut down as long as they can. And they're encouraging our folks to do it. You think Democrats want to keep this, the government shut down? Politically, absolutely. Be I mean, they tell they, me. You know, so. yo, you all have been Democratic congressmen have said keep the shutdown going. Yes. Okay, so what about that to you? Yeah. Privately, yeah. Well, you know, and it, I mean, tongue in the cheek, book. right? I mean, they're not <laughs> tongue they're, in cheek, but I mean, I mean, look, Democrats believe in big government, no question. Right. But this is benefiting them politically. So Nunez said, look, you get these guys behind closed doors, they want this shutdown to continue. You know, they don't care that cancer kids aren't getting treatments at the National Institutes of Health. Remember, Harry Reid said, why would I want to make a deal just to save one kid? Why would we want to do that? So the, the, the meme out there is that they're the ones that want to get over the shutdown. The, Demo the Republicans are making it impossible. The reality is it is the Democrats that want to keep the shutdown going purely for political reasons. They think with the help of the compliant media that Republicans are going to be blamed for this and it will help them politically. They don't care about the human cost in the meantime of what happens. Kids die from cancer, fine, as long as we can get Nancy Pelosi uh, back the um, gavel. Now, I'm going to uh, come back to this again. Uh, Rob, let's have clips 9 and 10 ready to go. Senator Rand Paul. I want to listen. To, I want you to listen to me uh, carefully on this. I may come back to this in the next segment. Triple eight five at nine eight eight four zero. By the way, is the number. Um, President Obama. Well, let me save that. I'm going to develop that at the beginning of the next segment. Why I believe President Obama wants a shutdown. It's a twofer for him. I believe President Obama thinks he can destroy this economy, which he wants to do, and he can destroy the Republican Party if this shutdown continues. He wants it to continue. He wants a crisis because he thinks it will destroy the American economy and he thinks it will destroy the Republican Party. And I'll explain my thinking uh, at the beginning of the next segment. Now, before we go back to the phones, it's important to deal with this issue of the debt ceiling because everybody's saying this is going to be a, a catastrophe. It's going to plunge America into default. We heard President Obama saying in the last segment, we can't afford that. The entire economy is dependent on the United States. We'll take the entire economy of the world into a tailspin if we don't raise the debt ceiling, if we go into default. And it's important to understand what default means. Now, listen to me carefully when I'm speaking to you because this is absolutely critical. The term default is being thrown around, but here's what it means. You only go in 
to default when you fail to pay the interest on your debt. The only way you can go into default, the only way if the United States goes into default, if it refuses to pay the interest on the national debt. That is it. That's the only way we go into default. And here's Senator Rand Paul talking to Aaron Burnett of a CNN. And Aaron Burnett says to uh, Senator Rand Paul, one final question. You heard Harry Reid say, do you feel that when he was asked, do you feel the debt ceiling will be broached? And the debt ceiling breached, I'm sorry, she says, is the big thing. It's much bigger than the government shutdown. Uh, you know Lloyd Blankfein, CEO of Goldman Sachs, met with the president. We're the most important economy. where the reserve currency. Payments have to go out. If the money doesn't flow in, money doesn't flow out, are you willing to let the debt ceiling not to expand? Here's what Senator Rand Paul said. I'm, I'm for taking default completely off the table and promising to the American people and to the markets, to Wall Street, that we will always pay the interest on the debt as a priority. You know how we do that? We bring in $250 billion in tax revenue every month. The debt payment's about $30 billion. We just promise we'll always pay it. What's going on is, interestingly, the Democrats are scaring people, saying we might not pay it because Republicans don't want to raise the debt ceiling. If you don't raise the debt ceiling, what that means is you'd have a balanced budget. It doesn't mean you wouldn't pay your bills. We should pay the interest, and we should never scare the markets. So if I were in charge, I would say absolutely we will never default. And I would pass a law saying that the first revenue every month, the first revenue has to go to pay the interest. Now, that's a very, very important sound bite. Rand Paul is dead on the money. Thank God, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Thank God for Rand Paul and for his clear-headed thinking here. He says, number one... We get $250 billion a month in tax revenue. And remember, that keeps flowing right on in. Just because the government is shut down, that doesn't mean the, the money's not coming in. I got a story in the stack somewhere. The IRS is going to keep receiving your money. They're not going to send out any refunds. You're not going to get any money back from the IRS in a shutdown, but they're sure uh, willing to take your money. They're going to keep taking it, and we have to keep sending it in. So realize that money keeps shoveling in. I mean, the, the government keeps shoveling in 250 to $300 billion every single solitary month, every month that comes in, whether the government shut down or not, because you and I are still out there working and sending in our withholding. And Rand Paul says, look, it only takes $30 billion a month. It's actually less than that, $30 billion a month to service the debt. That's about 10%. In other words, roughly 10% of... Federal revenues is all it takes to keep the government from going into default. 10%. That's all it takes. So we can avoid default by making sure as a first priority that we service the debt, that we pay the interest on the debt. And Rand Paul says, I'm fine with that. Let's pass a law that says the first thing we're going to do with the money that comes in is we're going to pay the interest on the debt. If we do that, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot go in to default. So understand that. Default is off the table. It's not going to happen. You just take 10% of what comes in, devote it to servicing the debt. We cannot go into default. And here's the other thing. This is very, very important to understand what Ron Paul says here. If you don't raise the debt ceiling, what that means is you have a balanced budget. I want to repeat that again. If you don't raise the debt ceiling, what that means is you have a balanced budget. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not need a balanced budget amendment. We don't need one. All we need is enough representatives in Congress, enough senators in Congress that simply refuse to raise the debt ceiling. You don't do that. If you don't raise the debt ceiling, you have a balanced budget by the end of that day. You have an instantaneous balanced budget. You don't have to do an amendment. You don't have to do nothing. Just don't raise the debt ceiling and instantaneously magically, uh, presto changeo, you've got a balanced budget by the close of business that day. That's why I, I am a firm believer in not raising the debt ceiling whatsoever. We all have to live within our means. Federal government ought to be willing to do it also. But here Aaron Burnett says this, but look, it's still defaulting. She's still using that word inappropriately. It's still defaulting if you, if you got behind on Social Security payments or anything like that. Here's what Rand Paul said. Like why that. should you, that's why, still the full faith and credit. 
why would you be late on your Social Security payments? We have a bill that's called the Full Faith and Credit Bill, and we've passed it in the House before. We've introduced it in the Senate, and it says you pay Social Security, you pay Medicare, you pay uh, your soldier's salaries, and you pay the interest on the debt. We've got money for all of that. So very, very important again. Very, very important. Understand, these are the two most, most important sound bites we've played all week. Rand Paul saying, look, we've actually passed a bill. It's gotten through the House that says with the money that comes in, our priorities are going to be pay the soldier salaries to pay Social Security, take care of Medicare reimbursements and service the debt. And he said, Rand Paul says, we've got enough money coming in every month to do that. We can take care of We don't have to do anything. We don't have to borrow any money. This is just the money that's coming into the federal government. We can take care of soldier salaries. We can take care of Social Security. We can take care of Medicaid, uh, Medicare. And we can take care of interest on the debt. And we don't have to borrow a dime to do it. We've got enough money to do that right now. So that's, we, we're not, good. Even, even if you use the term default to refer to not sending Social Security payments, that's not going to happen. We've got the money to take care of all of those things. Well, let's go to the phones. Let's grab a call from Philip in Hickory, North Carolina. Uh, Philip, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Hello, Brian. Thank you for taking my call. Yes, sir. I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you. Um, listen, I listen to your show every day, and I listen to uh, uh, family radio every day. And uh, the Lord just uh, really wanted me to put this out there, and I don't know if I – anyway, let me get to it. Um, we talk about all the all the tangibles of what's going on, but I think the real thing that's going on is, and I'll read this, and no one could, this is from the Living Bible, and no one could get a job or even buy in any store without the permit of that mark, which is either the name of the creature or the code number of his name. Here is a puzzle that calls for careful thought to solve it. Let those who are able interpret this code the numerical values of the letters in his name add to 666. Tex Obama, 62262. Think about it. We're not under God's care anymore. We're under 666. And that's why they're always calling the Affordable Care Act Obamacare because it's the mark. Barack Obama is the Antichrist. All right, Philip, well, listen, you got some people to share that view. I'm not sure I'm ready to go that far, but a lot of people would agree with you. Focal Point, AFR Talk.